Hello friends, welcome to Gardening's Creekside. I am Jenny and it is a Saturday afternoon. The nursery is closed and we're gonna go plant up uh, an aqua pot in the shade. I am so far behind on getting my annuals into the pots in the ground. I don't have any in the ground yet. And so I just take the time whenever I have it. And so the nursery is closed. We've had a fantastic um, weekend leading up to Mother's Day. So I thought it would be fun for y'all just to kind of come along with me as I pick out the plants and everything to go into the shade aqua pot. So before we do that though, I do want to show you I finally got the water trough planted. I did this on Thursday when the nursery was actually open and so it was a little slow so I was able to pot up the water trough. If you remember, gosh, this will be its third summer that we've had it here. Got an idea off of Facebook one time. Last year we had the Wicked Witch. I'll link that video up above so you can go back and look at it. So I had Wicked Witch, Diamond Frost, I think, um, and then I had the Sharon Petunia, lots of things. So it was really full, pinks and whites. This year I went completely different. I was like, I want to switch it up. So normally this is gonna be in the sun, full sun until about two o'clock in the afternoon until the sun goes behind the barn and then it's in the shade. So this year I have gone kind of with the green, yellow, red theme. So in the back, I've got three of the Prince Tut grasses. Now remember, Prince Tut will get nice and tall and wide um, and have those great little plumes at the top. And then in between each of those, I did the new Color Blaze Pineapple Brandy from PW. Of course, this is, um, these are, those both are all PW. This is a fantastic one. It can do sun or shade. And remember in the landscape, last year in the trial garden, how it got nice and big. So those are in there. Then hidden, you can see just a little bit coming up. This, I have one, two, three of the caladiums from our sweet friends over there at Classic Caladiums. They sent us a ton of caladium crowns and so we are growing them and they are coming up but this is clowning around so there's one two and three you can just start to see them poking their little heads up these will get huge because we really packed those bulbs in there so this whole area is going to be full of those gorgeous red and green caladiums and then on the edge is the gold dust again this is another great annual from proven winners nice and low and wide um, and with those beautiful yellow flowers so this is going to be my only flowering plant in this whole trough it will get nice and big now enough about that grab the wagon let's get some potting soil so you know I'm a big fan of the PW potting soil it does the absolute best for us so that aqua pot I know I'm gonna need probably a whole one and maybe a piece of another so this is from me working the other day so we have that bag now let's go grab some plants but on our way I want to show you um, ugh, by Saturday afternoon we're pretty tired my soul is getting heavy um, I want to show you a couple of things first of all the other day yesterday I think it was yesterday maybe it was Thursday I don't remember the days all run together um, I potted up another container now I did not plant the aqua pots. This is a total fake out for the nursery. Um, I joke and I told Jerry, I was like, if you want to sell it, stick it in the aqua pot and it gets sold. So we were putting um, hanging baskets in here and as soon as we would put a hanging basket in here, somebody would take them and off they went. So then we had to switch it out. Um, so these are completely potted. They're not staying here. This is the red snow drifts. So it's a fun little fake out. Okay. Now, again, you've been to this space before, next to our outhouse. It's not really an outhouse, it's just the what houses our electrical for the nursery. Um, is this great kind of faux bird bath that is, it's not unique stone, it kind of looks like unique stone, but it's not. Um, 
bird bath, but it's really meant to be a planter. Like it truly is supposed to be a planter. So it's on the pedestal. So this, I know you're looking at it right now and it looks like it's sun. Just trust me, this is a shade container. It does get about an hour, maybe two hours of the afternoon sun. For the vast majority of the day, this is completely in the shade. This is the one time of the day where it's in the sun, but just go with me, just trust me. It is a shade container. So I did here, kept it really simple. Two Surefire Rose Begonias. Then we did Infinity White Impatience. Be that beautiful white bloom on it, pure white bloom. My Surefire is gonna be the tallest one. They're gonna be, you know, probably in a container about that 18 inch mark. Then the Impatience will be about a 14 inch mark. Then we did, of course, the, the beloved Silver Falls. This is the Dichondra Silver Falls. This will fill in and just spill over amazingly well. And then because I have all these beautiful caladiums from Classic Caladiums, we stuck in here. This is the heart and soul um, caladium. Jerry, come here for a second, I want you to show you this. Um, so this one has a little bit more, I'll show you the tag and I'll let you get in there beside it. So there's one little baby leaf that has popped up, but this has a lot more of the pink in it. Um, green and the white. Now again, these caladiums were in a gallon size container. So all of that hole that you see, that empty space, that's where the caladiums are gonna be. So they're gonna get nice and big, 12 to 14 inches tall, really wide, big, huge leaves on them. So just imagine this is gonna be tall and just completely filled in, massive color with the caladiums right here white so we have the green white pink it's all going together there's a bee it's a bee now we're gonna go get some now we're gonna go get some flowers and we're gonna get this um aqua pot planted up obviously i still have to do the wheelbarrow because good heavens it's pitiful i'm wrestling there we go got it it's real life here people So I have thought about this. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for this aqua pot. It is a the cobalt blue. Well, technically, it's the smooth light blue pot um, that is an aqua pot. And so we're going to do something a little fun today. We're going to do all begonias, all different kinds of begonias in this aqua pot. So. It is gonna be in the deep shade back over there. So first, in the background, as the kind of the star of the show, are gonna be the dragon wing red begonias. Dragon wing, angel wing. I'll let you get in there and see that. Now, these begonias are definitely for, nope, Jerry says no. Okay, they're angel wing begonias. Beautiful red, they look very much like surefire begonias, but once they get bigger, they're gonna have more of a weeping habit. So we're gonna put, I'm going big. We're gonna put two of those in there. Then we're gonna do Pegasus begonia. This is part of their accents line. Um, gorgeous, beautiful foliage on it. Not gonna have a whole lot of um, flowers. They may do some flowers, but it'll be really kind of insignificant. It's mostly for the foliage. We'll show you up more closer um, as we get going and planting. So that's gonna be the centerpiece. We're slightly doing, we're doing more of a, a thriller, filler, filler. Not really any spillers in this one. And then the brand new um, double up begonias. So we're gonna do them in white. So got two of those that are gonna go in. These are great, remember? Now these can do sun or shade. Grew these in the shade last year and they just get huge and glorious. Really pretty and I thought it would be a nice contrast of the leaf color. So we're gonna do a container just with three different types of begonias to show you how that looks. This is the first for me, so why not, right? Let's try something new. All right, we gotta back it up. We got plant deliveries. Um, we had four deliveries yesterday, two of which, like one was here first thing in the morning, which was great. 
Then we had one um, about mid-morning. She brought some peonies and um, what else did she bring? Hydrangeas, I think. Um, lots of great things. Had a mulch delivery, so that was good. So you'll see the fresh, big, huge pile of mulch. And then we got those that tropical delivery at um, 9.30. The truck showed up at 9.30 last night and he left at 10.30. So we had a very busy night. Um, so let's get to planting this aqua pot. All right, so we have this great aqua pot right here in within the bed that we did, I don't know, what, two months ago? Remember Jerry and Jackson and I? cut down some trees, we got the mulch pile. Anyway, we created this shade bed. So when my mom and I were laying this bed out, we said, you know what, it'd be great to put the aqua pot right here because it'll bring some height and bring some annual colors. Now, for those of you maybe that don't remember what an aqua pot is or you've never heard of an aqua pot, an aqua pot is a self-watering container. It's quite a genius idea. Um, Jack Barnwell designed it. Michael Carr is the artist who creates the pots and then Proven Winners is the one who markets it and distributes it. So these are aqua pots, very simple. So it is this gorgeous ceramic glaze container, handmade in Vietnam, um, beautiful color, but it doesn't have a drainage hole in the bottom. It has this system that fits into it. So the soil fits on here down into the soil tube and then the tube has slits in it that the water can wick up from with the soil. So you just put that down in the bottom like so and then this is your water tube. So the water tube, fill tube, water tube, whatever it's called, goes in there and then the hose just sticks in there. You fill it up. There's a little hole in the back of the pot so when the pot gets full of water in the bottom it squirts out and you know you're done. So there's no risk of over filling the container, whether by you and the hose or by um, the rainwater. So you just basically at this point, you just plant it as normal. So I have learned a trick though, is you put your soil in and you don't fill the pot all the way up. Here's my little scooper. Um, but we, we had that soil tube is to take your fist and to pack down the soil into that soil tube. That way it's nice and tight in there and it's making contact with the water that is around it. So once you've got it nice and firm in there, then you can just fill it up like normal. Um, so it may not, it may just only take this little bag right here. That's the thing. I have a hard time gauging sometimes how much soil I need to use. So I think if we had just used one brand new bag, that would have been enough. But oh well, all is well. I love using the PW soil. Um, it has enough bark in it that it's nice and aerated. It doesn't get too compacted. Um, so it stays nice and fluffy. It drains well while retaining moisture and it has the slow release already in there. There we go. So it has their slow release fertilizer in the soil. Sometimes I add a little extra, sometimes I don't. Today's one of those days where I'm not going to. So. I'm going to get as much soil in here as I possibly can because the more soil, the more room that the roots can grow in. Moisture isn't obviously going to be too much of an issue here because it's a self-watering container, but you need somewhere for your roots to grow. So if you have any clumps, just break them up. That's natural, especially like on like this one, a big old clump, just break it with your hand. Um, it depends on where the bag was in the pallet. So if it's on the bottom of the pallet, then obviously it's gonna be a little more um, compacted than if it was on the top of the pallet. So just break it up. All right, so my thought process here is we're gonna do the two angel wings in the back. So you can already see how they're kind of have that great drape weep look to them. Now, 
When I plant it today, it's going to be, obviously, you're going to see some room between the plants. That does not bother me. We have a very long growing season here in North Carolina. We're going to put Pegasus kind of here in the middle. So I'm thinking longevity. I don't have a big event this weekend. I don't need it to look full and glorious, you know, for like right now. I like to see how they grow and develop. Then we're going to do the double ups basically kind of like that. So we're just going to go for it. Um, so I've got my kind of impressions. So I like to see where they go. And then I pick one up at a time. I've got my impression right here. So I just move the soil. Normally on our annuals, like that's not really root bound. So yes, there's a lot of good roots that are grown and developed, but I would not consider that a root bound plant. So I'm not, if anything, you can just kind of come in here and just break it up like that. Just give it a little zhuzhy zhuzh. It's not necessary. Okay, a lot of times people think you've got to really break up the roots before you can put the plant in there. You're probably actually doing more harm than you are good. I'm just going to get them in there. I love the um, these begonias because they're just so hardy and reliable and you really have to work hard to mess them up, <laughs> which is always a good thing. Um, last year, I had angel wings in a container here out in the pines, and I wasn't, I wasn't thinking, but it was planted underneath a bird feeder, and the birds weren't the problem. It was the, um, the pesky raccoons that came at night to raid the bird feeders, and evidently this was a little chunky raccoon and he fell smack dab on top of the begonia broken to smithereens i mean they they were flattened and they had just started looking good and when i discovered it my mama was with me and i was like mama and she was like jenny don't worry it'll act they'll come back they'll look you know better than ever just give them some course mama's always right and so it did so I want to show you up close sorry I get distracted about planting I want to show you the color of that Pegasus it's a beautiful has some silver that blue a little bit of a hint of a red in there Whoop. bug there you go you can't be in this nursery business this gardening business and be too scared of bugs so Bugs, snakes. A lot of y'all are asking about snakes. Don't have too much of a problem with snakes around here. It's all good. All right, so Pegasus is gonna go in the middle. Now Pegasus is gonna get really large. It's gonna really fill in. So in about two months or so, this whole container is just gonna be huge and full and it will last us the entire season. So then in the front, we're gonna do the two double up whites and they're going to go in here now they're not the double ups are not going to really be a spiller so i'm not really going to have a spiller in this container and that's all right because remember the thriller filler spiller while it is a recipe it's a suggestion it's not a law you don't have to plant containers that way it's there's no set rules in gardening because remember it's your garden so if you enjoy it and it looks good to your eye, go for it. It's fantastic. All right, so in we go. And whenever you're planting annuals, you really just kind of plant them at soil level. You don't have to worry. I know we talk about with, with um, shrubs and trees and perennials sometimes here in the south with our red clay. Annuals are a whole different beast because obviously they're going in a pot. They're going in potting soil. And there you go. Now. Again, this is going to be fun to watch this grow and develop. I've made a mess, as always, because it's not gardening until you get dirty. So get that cleaned up. And as I always tell you, top dress your um, containers in mulch. So this mulch 
is one that we use here at the nursery. We use around our house. Um, we use it in landscapes for customers. It's just a great hardwood mulch. Um, whatever you have available for you, just do that. We, I recommend the mulch because one, it cleans up the, the, the container. It makes it look nice and neat and tidy. When you water your plants, the soil is not going to splash up on the plants and get them dirty. And then it helps retain the moisture. Now, even though this is a self-watering container, we still want to retain the moisture in our soil. We don't want to, to lose that and it helps insulate the roots, so forth, so on. Really makes a massive difference in how your plants respond. So if you've never done it, I would really encourage you to try it. Even do like a side-by-side -side comparison. If you've got a couple containers that are growing near each other or you know in your yard, if you don't believe me, test one out, see how it does. Um, I think you'll really be impressed with how your plants respond to it. So now that the mulch is in here, all right, now how we maintain this. So first of all, get this out of the way. I've got my hose, I pulled it over here. All right, so make sure I don't knock anything over. Do y'all ever wrestle with hoses? We wrestle with hoses all the time. Oh, blessed. All right, so on this guy, I'm gonna take off my wand part. And then the fun thing is you can just stick the hose directly into the fill tube. Just fill it up. Wait for water to squirt out the back. I find that in early spring, especially this being a shade garden, shade container. Um, I'll have to fill it up maybe once every two weeks, two and a half weeks. Um, and then once the heat hits, the plants get bigger, the roots get bigger, I'll be filling it up once a week. It's best to go ahead and pick a day so that way it's part of your routine and you don't forget, oh, did I water it on Tuesday? Oh, last week it was a Thursday. Oh, what day is it today? Like pick a day. So if it's like a Monday, do Monday. Try to do it every, um, the same every week. Wait to see if my water is squirting out. Oh, there we go. So now I learned this last year, um, kind of the hard way on my porch because I had one of these, or still do, have one of these on my porch that unless we water it, it doesn't get watered because it's under the porch. Um, for the first couple of weeks or so, when you do water, go ahead and water from the top also initially because that really soaks in that soil. The roots get some good water and this hose is pretty powerful. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit and just water from the top. Now, this is the beautiful thing about these pots is that I don't have to worry about overfilling this because once this water reaches down to where the water reservoir is, it'll just squirt out the back. So super easy, but I'm really thoroughly soaking this, this soil so that I know that everybody's got good water. It kind of helps start the wicking process because it'll take a little while for that dry soil to really kind of begin to truly soak up all that water throughout the whole pot. So by doing this, I'm just ensuring that the soil is nice and damp and it begins the whole process. The plants are happy and they will begin growing very, very happy. Um, I will go ahead and begin doing some liquid fertilizer on these guys once a week, once every two weeks. Um, honestly, again, get on that schedule, give them some of that good liquid water soluble fertilizer. That's really where you're gonna get some good flower power for these plants. Um, but as always, we will keep you updated on how this beautiful aqua pot does over here in the shade. Um, I think it's gonna be a really fun addition to this whole bed, bring a nice little pop of color again. Didn't, never thought that I would do a container in three different types of begonias, 
but why not? Go ahead, try something new um, and see how it does. That's the beautiful thing about doing annuals is you can switch it up every year and try something new. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.